thank you, Nessa, for giving us, like, you know, a month ago, um, a perfect example of what this actually looks like in the HSC. So this is out of this year's HSC exam, which is kind of handy because I was like looking through previous ones. This kind of question's not that common, um, but it does come up as you can see. Now, just have a look at it. Uh, you can see here. Yeah, yeah. What? It's like, where does that come from? It's like a Pokemon, like a wild call has appeared. Okay. So, what you got here? Let's just rewind a little bit. You've got here. All right. Here's where the. Here's what the turns actually look like, which is a version of what we did. Do you see this? Right. It's like, oh, okay. Start with route two. Chuck in another root two underneath there for some reason. Um, so these are all nested, all the square root signs underneath one another. And then they give you this. This is the recursive formula, right? Right there. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry. This will do. There's the recursive formula. And they've said, Haha, yeah, don't prove that. Like, this is the thing you're going to use, right? And then they say this. Now, you remember I told you, right? Um, I gave you examples of this because we could do, and it's actually very good to to flex that muscle and work it. But like, I would never have come up with this. Like, I could have looked at a hundred of these terms and I would never thought, of course this is cosine, right? Um, and this is cos of, let's have a look, pi on the first integer there would be one, right? So this would be two to the power of one plus one, which is two. So the first one would be pi on four. And then the next one would be pi on eight and then pi on 16. I don't know anything about those, right? Um, pi on four and pi on two and pi on four are where I, I, um, I end. So I could never have guessed this. So thank goodness we don't have to guess it. However, after you've come up with a hypothesis, what happens after this? You use induction. You, yeah, you use induction. So I, didn't, I don't have to be the person who, um, who came up with the idea. However, I'm just gonna very quickly walk you through um, oh, it's up this way, right? I'm going to quickly walk you through how we would do this, okay? Now, some of these bits you know how to do, right? So you can see this is just me testing out the first value. So they're like we said before, pi on 4. You get your 2 times 1 on root 2. Happy times. Satisfied so far? What next? Yep, I'm going to assume that it's true. So you can see that it's going to just pan out. I'm just doing a substitution. By the way, don't fret too much to try and keep up with the writing because it's going to rapidly outpace you. That's why I'm doing it on the screen because here's one I prepared earlier, but you'll get this afterwards if you want it. Now, at this point here, and this is something which I want you to feel um, in control of, even though I'm about to give you an example, right? Um, when you first met algebra, all the way back in year seven, right? We would often tell you, hey, here's an X, here's a Y, and you know, do some stuff with it. Find out what X and Y are, right? However, where algebra really started for us is you, you're trying to write stuff and it's, it's awkward to write, like especially when there are long and complicated numbers. So let's, let's just introduce some pro numerals to make it easier for us, right? So what I'm going to do in here, because I know in a proof by induction, I have to write the same terms repeatedly. And I'm like, that pi on 2 to the k plus 1, that's just a pain to write a lot, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a pro numeral for that. I'm going to say, let's just call that, let's give that angle a name, right? Hey, miss, what time's the bell? Uh, you've got about five minutes. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. So, so what I'm going to do is, because um, it's cause of something, it's an angle, right? So that's why I'm just calling it alpha. You can call it whatever you want. You could call it theta or R for Ryan or S for Sean. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, okay? But what that means is, can you see, because I've got this angle, I've chosen it to be exactly that angle. So how would you restate this in terms of alpha? Two colors alpha. Yeah, fantastic. So this is going to be much easier to work with because I'm just going to have to write this repeatedly. Okay. All right. I've done the test. I've done the assume. What's next? Good. So I just before I even start doing anything, I'm going to just write down the thing that I've got to prove. Okay. So what that's going to look like is here it is. Now, just before we move any further, have a look at what I've done because I have sort of skipped a line in there. Um, this would be 2 to the k plus 1 plus 1. So that's where the plus 2 comes from, yeah? Now, again, because I'm like, uh, this is just a pain, I'm going to have to write it over and over again. Think carefully, though. In fact, I am going to ask you to write this down. How does this relate to the alpha that I had before? It's a half of it. Yeah, it's a half. Very good, because it's on the denominator. So, because it's, it's half the size, right? Now, this is actually very important. Because when you put this in here, right? You see there's the half, right? So, because... What color was I using? Orange, right? There's my alpha right in there, right? So, I could just write that as alpha on 2. Now, 
how's your trigonometric identities? Because um, this is one of those things where the HSC exams, part of what makes them so difficult is that unlike, okay, here we are learning one topic. We're just going to stay in this nice little area, right? By the time of the HSC exam, in theory, you know everything, right? So they can combine in different areas of maths that maybe you didn't do, you didn't do trigonometry and proof by induction at, at a very similar time at all. So you're like, man, that was like seven months ago in my brain, okay? That's part of what makes the HSC so hard. Um, it's part of also what makes it a good test of whether you really understand. Because for me, I can go through a proof by induction without really knowing what I'm doing. It kind of goes on autopilot, doesn't it? And you're like, oh, hard algebra a bit, but then off you go, right? But this, and this is, by the way, let's have a look. Four marks, right? So this is, this is some serious work that they're going to pay. <sighs> what do I do with this half angle? Yeah. Is alpha on two. Very good. Every halving of something is just doubling from a different perspective. And we actually know the double angle formula much easier, right? So what I did was, and again, sorry for time because I know I'm watching the clock. Um, if I just go to, all right, this is my double angle formula. Now, there is a version of this, which I'm going to get to in a second, which is the, it's just in terms of cosines. And the reason why I want it just in terms of cosines is because the question is just, there's no signs at all, right? Um, one of the tricky things for me is I have a terrible memory, so I don't remember the formula. I'm like, is it the one minus or is it the minus one? Like, I always get it wrong. So I just remember one thing and then you can get anything from this result if you know it well, right? So what I did was to get rid of the sine squared, I just did the substitution there. Where, is, where does that come from, by the way? That's another identity. It's got a name, do you remember? They're all trig. It's to do with, it's, it's, in a, it's in a right angle triangle. So it's the Pythagorean identity. Um, if you want to remember where that comes from, by the way, do you remember on the unit circle? Yeah. Uh, you've got, sorry, that's a terrible circle, but you get the idea. You've got cos theta, sine theta as every coordinate on the unit circle, right? So therefore, you've got cos and sine in this right angle triangle, right? So this is the x coordinate, that's cos. This is sine. What's the hypotenuse in the unit circle? It's 1. So that's where we get sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 squared. So that's why it's the Pythagorean identity. You're just doing Pythagoras in the unit circle. So anyway, that's where this comes from. Eventually, this is going to pan out and give me this. But I want it in terms of the, the double angle, right? So that's why you can see I rearranged to here. OK, now just pause for a bit. See that cos squared? Go all the way back. This is a really weird piece of notation right here. Sorry, it's so strange. Can you, can you tell me what you think that means? You're squaring the, the A term. Yeah, that's right. The new term is A n plus 1. That's the next one, right? And then that squared being there, it's a bit awkward, but that whole thing is being squared, OK? And this is very suspicious to me because, look, the thing that I'm squaring is a it's a cosine term, right? So these are the kinds of clues that are in your brain. You're like, oh, am I headed in the right direction or not, OK? The bell's going to go very shortly, so let me sort of speed up a little bit. This is going to give me this, right? Now, um, just very quickly, I'm just going to tell you, like, the reason why I'm going towards this is because there was that half angle that I had to deal with, right? So from this line to this line, can you see I've gone from thetas to alphas and I've just halved everything. So I've gone from a double angle thing to a half angle thing. It's just the same thing dressed up slightly differently, okay? Um, I did a slightly sneaky thing here. I took the square root of both sides. You've got to be quite careful when you take the square root of both sides of an equation because if I said to you x squared equals 25, right? What solutions are there for x? Yeah, you can get both of those, right? But sometimes, say, say for example, like this might have come out of Pythagoras, and we would say, oh, but it's a length, so therefore I can disregard the negative solution. Why can I disregard the negative for this problem? I am listening, listening to positives, not integers, by the way. They, there's, there's some square roots, but that's actually part of the, the secret. Sorry. Um, have a look. How many of these numbers are going to be negative? None of them. So that's why I can actually, there's a reason why I can say, don't worry about the negatives, OK? All right. So now I've got this. I've got to tuck it away. And now the actual, the proof part begins, right? So I can say, all right, this is just like we did before. We start with the recursive definition. That's what you suggested to me, Ryan. It's great because I know that this thing is true. Um, 
I need to then sort of fiddle about with this. I, I pulled the same trick that I did before. I can say it's positive, so therefore don't worry about the plus or minus. And then from there, just watch the way the algebra kind of unfolds. There's the use of the assumption. You see that? Have a look at your piece of paper. That's the that's the AK and there's the cause that they've, they've handed to me, right? And then from there, we've actually done all the hard work. <coughs> um, that's where, this is a bit weird I know, but let me highlight it for you. Can you see I've taken out a common factor of two, which is four times a half. Why, why do I want that half down there? Look back. Yeah, I've got, this, I've got this half up here. So in every proof by induction, you've got to keep an eye on where you're going and where you've come from, right? What you, wh there's where I'm going, and this is what I've got, so that's how I sort of jam them together. All right, let me just get rid of this and then we can walk through the whole logic together. Once you're, once you're there, that's the half angle result we proved up in blue, and then, ta-da. Wow. Four marks. Um, don't worry, I wouldn't have, yeah, that's right. I, mean, I wouldn't have had a good time. But can you see, you, you're doing like a lot of the standard induction stuff, but then it's like, oh, can I bring in my, my trigonometry? That's what will make the HSC challenging when you get there at the end of the year. Thanks, guys. Thank I you. hope you enjoyed.